Yeah, we are on the margin of the Antarctica plate. So the Antarctica plate is sort of a piece of shell of crust uh, of the plate that uh, covers the, the southern part of our globe. And uh, all around it is uh, connected with uh, plates by mid-ocean ridges. When we say ridge, we say a part of the boundary that is normal to the spreading direction, so to the direction which two plates are going apart from each other, and the fracture zone is parallel to the drift direction of the plate. So uh, we are the first people to identify the Paleodictin. It looks like he's actually a Holotherian. Oh, you can see what's making the trail. It's actually his deposit as he sucks up the sediment yeah. and the processed sediment comes out of the back. The big yellow brownie piece of rock doesn't have the black manganese color, so we know it's relatively recently fallen down the hill. So we decided here to make a, 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 a survey with uh, taking different images and uh, so that can be reconstructed in 3D and then you can really well orient it all the, the, uh, all the uh, outcrop. See if we can't get a strike and a dip on, on that feature. Um, right now we're, uh, we want to line the submarine up along the axis of that feature so we can get it strike. So we're rotating the submarine slowly uh, heading at 7473, coming around. So when we get the reconstructed 3D image, it will be really um, useful. One of the actual hardest things that the geologists do is trying to interpret the three-dimensional geometry from these two-dimensional pictures. And so, you know, you look at that picture and you can clearly see that it's a complicated shape. But actually trying to judge dips and things and the dip direction very accurately is very difficult on a 2D image. And so potentially getting the 3D reconstruction can be really helpful because we can do things like rotate that image and look, you know, align it so the dip is perpendicular to us or parallel to us. This is a big fault zone. I mean, this yeah. is amazing. Look so this the, is the brittle fault overprinting the myelinites. Yeah. This is really cool. 
That is pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, you want to put the uh, laser pointers on that? It looks like that's something we could sample. Yeah. Yeah, we should definitely uh, get a close-up. Oh, wow. Look at the back of this rock. Our research is important because we bring the biologists to oh, the best look, outcrops. Look at those. Look at those things. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah, we're going to have to... Yeah, they're, they're, they're clams with things sticking out of their mouths. Barnacles, he says. Well, look at all this feathery stuff. Yeah, they're filtering out of the water column. Uh, sort of like a, you'd expect out of a... Uh, I mean, are these little tube worms? Oh, look at look at this right here. What is this? You think that's a brittle star? So the pilot is going to zoom in on it just because he likes it too. Sounds good to me. I mean, how can you resist that? Okay, <laughs> let's put him in the basket. I think we'll be able to identify this rock. Look at how he's attached to the bottom. Can crinoids walk? I hope so, and I hope that he escapes before coming up. Save the crinoid. There is a movement. <laughs> listen, listen here, there is a strong people movement. The mixture of black rocks and uh, greenish yellow, I would say, uh, rocks represents two uh, different things. The black covered rocks have manganese crust on them. This is hydro hydrogenous manganese that precipitates on the rock uh, as it sits in the water. And it only is found on rocks that have been exposed in the water column for a long time. The other rocks uh, are lacking that coating. And that means we have this mixture here, which means we're looking at a mixture of rocks that were on the surface and ones that were down deeper. And we think that this feature that we're going on is the head wall of what's called a landslip, where the hillside collapses and exposes um, the rock underneath. Looks like we're coming up on something here. Right up ahead. Huh. Yeah, we are, it, we are reaching some outcrop. It does so look that, like outcrop. Good eye, Daniel. We yeah. are in outcrop. Yes. Well, look at this. So this is a very recent... Uh, Fracture. Fracture. Subsurface needed. Cleaned up. So I suspect that the old region that we are looking at today can be made up by this limestone and uh, we are in the frontal part 
with respect to the lateral movement of this structure. No, that is. So we have a fish hanging down from the top yeah. of the screen. Saying hello air. to everybody. Good morning, yep. sir. A rat tail, known for their little back fin. Rather handsome picture of it. Um, we're not at that shallow a depth, actually. We're at uh, 2,000. Okay, here meters. we can see the foliage. Oh, look the, at this. The inclination of the joints that is pretty, or the Question. almost vertical. So, and that uh, is in agreement with the interpretation of the thrusting of this part of the massif toward north. They could be bedding planes uh, that we've uh, be. been turned up by folding associated with the uplift. Because these didn't deposit today. If you're watching, you can see us gently, slowly traversing along the outcrop, taking video as we go. And we're going to do a couple of traverses, um, doing it to the right and then probably back to the left again. And this will allow us to take that imagery. Um, the, the uh, ROV crew will take the imagery and basically produce a three-dimensional reconstruction of this outcrop, which will of course help us to interpret the geology, the dip of the structures, and use all that information to feed back into our understanding of this feature. And we also enjoy this crinoid garden that appears time to time in the places where rocks are a little bit more stable and don't slump down. Uh, also remember that these crinoids have a certain mobility, they move around and then sometimes we see some, one of these creatures swimming in front of the camera, that's something that is touching for its beauty, even our geological soul. Yeah, I think that's a what's called a glass sponge, made of um, tiny spicules of silica, hence the glass. Let's try to understand if there is any change in the lithology. Do I see a structural trend in the... Seems something like, yeah... Bottom picture, yes. Batting. Yes, steeply dipping to the... <coughs> to the... I'm looking at the heading, so... Dipping south. Yeah, southwest. I suspect this is a sponge, a gastropod, yeah, some serpulides, yeah, and some chiripedes, yeah, and, uh, you see that it opens just to filter, to catch filtering. It is a pretty complex ecosystem, even though very small. So I thank you very much Mike and all the people that helped us to describe this dive and uh, all those that are listening and uh, all our families. <laughs>